Hi everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Ready, set, and go. Hi, Hi everyone. <laughs> Hi everyone. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. Today, this little guy and me are gonna go hunting for a wooden slab for our coffee table. This is something we wanted to make for a well. I've wanted to make for a while now, but I found it kind of hard because it was really hard to find slabs, which we're gonna look for right now. And <laughs> you're so funny. <laughs> and um, we're probably going to have to custom make the legs. So I hope this inspires you to make your own um, coffee table. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so we are at our local pawn shop. They have so much to pick from. I am so excited. Um, okay, this one really caught my eye. I love all the knots it has and all those details will look amazing on a coffee table. But I'm scared that if I like clear coat it, all this red is really gonna pop and I'm not a big fan of those red hues. So I'm gonna keep looking. Uh, this walnut looks amazing the only problem with this walnut piece of wood is the slab is way too thin i think it's like half an inch which is super thin i'm gonna keep looking hi everyone okay so i think i found the one this one looks amazing and i think this one is called poplar i think that's how you pronounce it um, they only want $40 for it. It's nice and thick and it doesn't have too much going on and it just has like a very pretty wood grain. I'm thinking if I need to, I can even stain it dark for a darker look. Guess who has the best husband in the world? He brought his truck to get my wood. Yay! He's so sweet. Okay, so I have a little bit of a situation right here. When I was looking at this wood at the pawn shop, it didn't look so bad. Um, yeah, I know, weird. I don't know why a pawn shop would sell wood. But anywho, I came home and I laid on the floor and um, here's what it looks like. It's bowed pretty bad, way worse than I thought it was. So I'm a little bit worried, but I'm hoping I can fix this with my hand planer. I'll give it a go and see how it looks. So the plan is to use this section for the tabletop and this end over here for the legs. Okay, so I went ahead and marked it right over that knot right there because I really want it to be a part of the coffee table. I think it'll add a lot of character. Then I went ahead and sectioned off this whole area for the legs. Okay, so here's what the legs look like. They're ready to be cut. I'm just gonna go over really quickly and explain how I drafted them. I used a regular pencil and a yardstick. All the areas that you see colored in is the leg area. I know it should totally be the opposite. My husband was on my case about this. Anywho, um, they're 17 inches in height and to begin, I sectioned them off into four equal pieces. Then I measured from the top of each leg three inches. So uh, this area right here is three inches. To give it a tapered look, I went ahead and measured one and a half inches from the inside of each leg. And then I did the same at the bottom, except I marked from the outside of the leg instead of the inside. And then I just simply connected uh, the dots and it gave me this tapered look. Uh, to finish it off, I just went ahead and filled this little area in with a rounded edge instead of a squared look. And we are ready to cut. Okay, so before we cut the top, for the coffee table, we actually decided to cut in the legs as much as we could with our saw. Um, it turned out easier this way. Now all we have to do is just cut them off at the top. We totally don't have the right tools to cut the legs, but we needed to cut them somehow and we used what we had. We had a saza, so we used that to finish cutting the rounded edges inside the legs. I'm not really worried about the way they look right now because I know I'll be doing a lot of sanding to finish them. Okay, the wood is all cut for the tabletop. 
now I am going to use my hand planer and see if I can flatten this foot out a little bit. So we actually got it down pretty good. This was the side that was bowed. We're just going to flip it over and take these edges off and that's it. We're not going to touch the center at all. Okay, I went ahead and cut some sample inserts for the legs. I'm hoping to get a cute little V in the middle. They were cut at a 35 degree in the middle and these sample pieces measure about six inches in length. I might still end up shortening them. I was thinking it would be good to actually use what was left when we cut the legs. Here's what I'm talking about. Uh, here's what was left from the legs when we cut them. I think these are perfect and I really love how they taper down if you look at them like this. I think this will work perfect. Okay, I used my miter saw and set it at 35 degrees to cut all my pieces for my V in the middle. Then I decided to cut my legs at a 10 degree angle at the top because I wanted them to angle out when they're attached to the coffee table. Here's how the leg and the V look. I just realized that since I cut my legs at a 10 degree angle, my V needs to have a 10 degree angle on it too to match the cut. So I'm just going to mark my leg right here and cut the V at that exact angle. Hopefully this works. Okay, I'm done cutting them and you can see there's a slight angle here. Now it should fit in nicely with the legs. Let's try this. Yay, it actually looks really good. I'm excited about this. To create a nice rounded edge on my legs, I use my angle grinder and this flap sander wheel. I think that's what it's called. I Googled it. I'm not sure if this is right, so correct me if I'm wrong. It's like tiny sheets of sandpaper and this stuff is like amazing. It worked perfect to round off the areas I needed. I also went ahead and marked at the bottom of the legs how rounded I wanted them and then I used my angle grinder to shape them off. This leaves them looking pretty rough but it's super quick. To smooth them out I used my DA sander and turned the legs slightly back and forth while sanding. This helped keep them round. I also went over the legs with some finer sandpaper just by hand. Okay, here's what the completed leg looks like versus the unfinished one. I am so surprised. I love how they turned out. This was way better than I expected. Next, we needed to make some pocket holes to connect the legs and the V together. I just went to Home Depot and got this mini Craig set. I'm a bit scared to try it because this is my first time ever doing something like this. I think I'm just gonna follow the instructions and give it a try on some scrap wood first. The instructions said to adjust this round metal ring on the drill bit with the Allen wrench provided. This will determine the depth of your pocket holes. Also, if you're wondering why the drill bit is so thick, that's actually needed for your screw head to fit through. I was totally asking the Home Depot associate for like a smaller set because this one looked too big and he's like, no, you need this. Duh, totally makes sense. Next, I used some metal clamps and secured my Craig jig, making sure it was even with the edge of the wood. Now, all you have to do is drill a hole. And then when you remove the clamp, you should have a perfect pocket hole. Here's what my test tries look like. I ended up making pocket holes on the legs as well as the top and bottom of the Vs. Then, to secure the two pieces together, I applied glue and we secured them with some screws. Okay, here's what the legs look like. It's coming together really nicely. Now all we have to do is attach these to the bottom of the table. To attach the legs, we made sure the surface was flat. Then we marked where we wanted the legs to be. We checked to see if the screws weren't too long by placing them by the edge of the table with the V next to it, and they actually ended up being a bit too short. So I used my Craig drill bit and adjusted the metal ring pretty close to the edge. Then we pre-drilled holes in the Vs. So this way when we secured the Vs to the table with the screws, the screw would fall in a bit deeper and make it long enough to hold onto the table better. 
Next, we secured the sides of the legs to the table as well, and this made a huge difference in durability. Okay, almost done. Next, Tony sanded it down and we mixed some art resin that I had left over from a previous project to fill the holes in the table. I'm in love with these details. They definitely make this table unique. Before pouring any resin, we made sure to remove as much dirt as possible from these holes. Then Tony flipped it over and taped off any visible holes on the bottom to make sure the resin doesn't leak through. He did this to the edges as well. If you're wondering why we use duct tape, that's just what we had on hand. It helped to have the table set up higher to work on this part of the project. We mixed equal parts of resin and hardener. Two important things that I've learned about resin is that resin loves to be warm. Keep it in a nice and warm place or let it sit in a water bath before pouring and stirring. If the resin is cold, it'll get crazy bubbles. I've had this happen to me a few times. Okay, and the second thing I learned is the three minutes of stirring is very important. Okay, for the first coat of resin, I didn't fill the holes with resin completely. I simply tried to just coat the holes with resin. The first coat is to help the dirt stay at the bottom if any is left and it helps avoid bubbles because they will start coming to the top. So pretty much applying a layer of clear coat and then we'll let it set and once it sets, I'll pour more resin on top. You tell them what you're doing. What are you doing? I'm doing what you're telling me to do. I'm not telling you to do nothing. <laughs> I'm filling the gaps. It's still tacky, but it's set enough not to mix with the fresh resin. Still tacky, but it's not set enough to mix with the fresh resin. Whatever. What? That doesn't make sense? Take a picture. It'll last longer. So, after she mixed 50-50, now she's just um stirring it stirred not shaken <laughs> not a bad joke not fun still not watching stop recording <laughs> After about 36 hours, the resin has set completely and was ready to be sanded down. I used some 230 grit sandpaper and sanded it down until I felt that the surface was smooth and even with the wood. Then I applied some of this natural Danish oil. It was not tinted. I just wanted to like bring out all the natural grains of the wood. That's the look I was going for. I didn't want to stain it in any way. So after I applied it, I went ahead and let it cure for a few days. We also gave the bottom of the table a coat of oil as well. Okay, go. So this table, you guys, we're not professionals. We're just doing how we do <laughs> Stop recording now. What else are you gonna say? Say it. If you guys um, have the right tools to do it, do it with the right tools. We tried to stick to our budget and we used whatever tools we had. Sawzaws and uh, grinders and hand sanding. And... But it worked out all right. We could all sit on it as a family. <laughs> and the legs won't spread apart. If you plan to seal your table after oiling it, make sure you let your oil cure for at least 72 hours before applying any clear protector or polyurethane because it will bubble. I've had this happen to me and it's horrible. Okay, to finish the table, I went with this deft clear wood finish. Once stirred, it kind of looks milky, but it actually dries nice and clear. I use my Wooster brush to help get a smooth finish and I think that a brush makes a huge difference in the finish. And that's it! Here's how the table turned out. I'm not going to lie, I honestly thought this project would be a lot easier. A huge thanks to my hubby for helping me with this. I couldn't have done this without him. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video and found it helpful. That's it for today, everyone. 
Don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you like this video and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you all next time. Bye.